क्या क्लोज हो जाए असलाम वालेकुम मैं जमीर अहमद अंसारी और आप देख रहे हैं जेड न्यूज फॉर यू अर्ज यह है कि आपने अपने चैनल Z News for You को अभी तक सब्सक्राइब नहीं किया है तो सब्सक्राइब करें और साथ में दिए हुए बेल आइकन को भी दबाएं जिससे हमारी आने वाली सभी वीडियोस के नोटिफिकेशन सबसे पहले आपको मिल सके and the ministry and the ministry of health and family welfare and parliamentary affairs from 1998 to 2003 in the himachal pradesh government and ladies and gentlemen i have the proud privilege in requesting you sir for your words of inspiration and wisdom let's ladies and gentlemen put our hands together to welcome our ambassador thank you sir my very senior colleague dr vinod k paul who is the member of the niti ayog shri kumar sen dr manisha shridhar and ashok dalwai ji and the distinguished members who are sitting here leaders from the health sector people representing from the bureaucracy from the judiciary and from the academia first of all i welcome all of you for this uh, opportunity that you have given to me to be a part of this function and to see to it that uh, we are all there to release the book which has been authored by manisha shridhar ji i on behalf, my behalf and all of you i congratulate manisha ji for giving this opportunity to me and writing this book which is known as public health innovations to maze of in- international instruments First of all I thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to be here and meet my old friends because uh, for the last 3 4 years a new assignment has been given to me which has kept me far away from the health fraternity so I got my opportunity to meet my old friends and when uh, Manisha ji and Tarun ji invited me to be part of this function I was very much moved because they remembered me and uh, i thought that i am not the right person because talking about uh, the nitty gritties and such a complicated subject which you have put uh, before us in a very structured form in this book once again i congratulate for you but i am not the right person to speak on the nitty gritties and the technical aspects which are there but still it's a very hard work which you have done and uh, because of your hard work we have been able to get this book and this book is going to help uh, the people from the academia people from bureaucracy also people who negotiate uh, people who uh, take care about the health sector and also see the national interest and also the they wish to strike a balance between the trade and uh, the innovations so all those technical aspects you have undertaken and gone and this book has been published we all know that uh, the economic interests and the strong influence of the health policies to promote innovations are there and for that uh, you have to strike a balance and you have to go into the details of it we all know that the trade and intellectual property and public health are inseparable but at the same time Uh, for the policies you have to strike a balance and for that all those technical aspects have to be uh, taken and taken i was discussing with amandeep ji when we were there in world health assembly 
they used to be have we used to have negotiations and the negotiations used to start at five o'clock and end at about two o'clock night. So I used to ask them, "Kya hua? Bula, sab kuch thik ho gaya." Maine kaha, "Sab kuch thik ho gaya. Bharat ke interest mein hua." Bula, "Haan, Bharat ke interest mein hua." Maine kaha, "Thank you very much." Kyun main isse zyada jaanta nahi tha. I did not know the nitty gritty is what is going to happen. But yes, to see that we contribute in the field of health, we contribute for the humanity. we also take the interest of the country and the people of the country and to strike a balance and also see to it that the innovation is also uh, given its due and it is supported so it was a very difficult task it was a tedious task but my officers did a very good job and i now i think that this book is going to be a guide to them for further negotiations and going to into the technical aspects If I talk about the book, international trade, innovation, and public health, all has been taken into consideration, and uh, uh, it's a very good guide for further to us, so that uh, the negotiations take place in the right perspective, and uh, the, it is not only for the people or the representatives who represent my country. but to all who are working in the health sector and working in detail friends uh, i will also take this opportunity to uh, illustrate how our government has tried to see to it that in the past 9 years how do we go forward through public policies and make a difference in the society and make a difference for the country when i talk we all remember that at one point of time gst was criticized we all know that what was our tax collection in 2014 and after gst and after the interventions the policy interventions the strong decisions the bold decisions which were taken it has brought our country from 11th largest economy to fifth largest economy now in the country we have overtaken great britain and uh, now we are going forward if i talk about uh, the manufacturing of mobiles in 2014 92% of the mobiles were being imported and especially from china now 97% of mobiles are being manufactured in india and also now apple is being manufactured in india that is If I talk about the automobile, once we had heard about the automobile market, and always we used to talk about Japan, but uh, now we are the third largest automobile market in the world, overtaking Japan. If I talk about steel, we are from fourth to second in in manufacturing steel. So, if we talk about the economic growth which has taken place in past nine years, it is commendable. if we talk about infrastructure in the past 9 years 18 lakh crores have been spent on infrastructure highways elevated roads metros uh, six lane four lane highways expressways uh, vande bharat and this year we decide prime minister modi decides to spend 10 lakh crores in one year for the infrastructure this is the development which has taken place so be it be infrastructure be it be education be it be health be it be economy in all sectors the policy and the bold decisions taken by our government headed by our dynamic leader prime minister modi lot of changes have come uh, i would also like to share with you about the health interventions because i i have been associated with health sector for a long time and i am the lucky one who had got the opportunity to uh be a minister for full one term in the state and also uh, a union minister at the center so health i've been associated with it for the past uh, 10 years you know if we talk about the national programs the tuberculosis national program it took 25 years to become a national program if i talk about tetanus it took some 28 years to become a national program if i talk about uh, the hepatitis it took some 30 years to become a national program and if we talk about other diseases also if i talk about uh, 
this uh, Japanese encephalitis. It took 100 years to become a national uh, uh, program. So that had been the situation. And we did not have the vaccines. We used to import it. And sometimes when we used to get the program, uh, the vaccines, it was only the people who could afford, they could get those vaccines. But we could never, never make it a national program. It took some 30, 40, 20 years to make a national program. But here, when Corona came, the first case was detected in 2020, 2020 uh, January. And it was in April 2020 that the task force was set up by Prime Minister Modi. And within nine months, uh, two vaccines, indigenous vaccines were developed. And we are proud to say that now 2.2 billion people have been vaccinated, vaccinated that is the double dose. And it is one of the India's largest and the fastest vaccination program that we have done. When we were talking about digitalization, people used to say, Kaise hoga, health record, kaun dega, private hai, ye hai, wo hai, all types of things were there. We started that program ke, and that helped in COVID for the vaccination. In America, you get a certificate of vaccination. It's, it is a piece of paper, but here you get your vaccination certificate on your mobile. This is Digital India. This is the change which has been brought. And the, to, the tune of 2.2 billion vaccination has been done. So these are the changes which has taken place. And uh, if I I remember when COVID was, uh, was not here, even then, the screening at the airports had started. Uh, Prime Minister had sensitized us, all of us, for using masks. And uh, even America could not take the decision whether to go for a lockdown or not. Even Europe could not take the decision whether to go for lockdown or not. They could not choose between humanity and economy. But we took a very bold decision. We went for lockdown and because of lockdown we were able to prepare the country to fight COVID. And that is how, you know, we didn't have ICU beds. Then in, to the tune of millions of beds were created. We did not produce PPE kits. So that was also produced. And now uh, I was told that uh, 500,000 PP kits were being manufactured per day. That was the capacity that India developed and we went forward. If I talk about the, the uh, testing labs, we had only 15 testing labs. And after three months, three and a half months, we had some 4,000 testing labs. If I talk about the uh, ICU beds, we had only 2,000 beds. And uh, after three, four months, we had 139,000 ICU beds. So that was the infrastructure which was created. If I talk about the oxygen, 900 trains were pushed into service and 37,000 million tons of liquid oxygen was transported to various parts. This, is the, this was the strength of India, which, was this, which, which we, we, we could see during the COVID times. One more thing I remember, I'm taking this opportunity, Manishaji, because uh, after a long time, I've got the opportunity to talk to uh, <laughs> Although I, I, I'm sorry I'm not doing justice to you because I only talk about the technical aspects of your book, which you have uh, brought forward. West VK Paul he has taken care. But I take this opportunity to share with you the good work done in the health sector. You see, when I visited uh, uh, Switzerland and participated as a health minister in the World Health Assembly, and I was made the president of the World Health Assembly. At that time, I used to hear a very common phrase, UHC, UHC, Universal Health Coverage. And what is your country doing about UHC? What is your country doing about UHC? And I used to feel little inferior. Ki pata nahi, hamare desh mein ye UHC, hum kaise karpayenge, kya hoga, what will happen? Things like that. Today, it's my proud privilege to say that we are here with Ayushman Bharat. Which means that uh, 550 million people of the country are getting 500,000 per year uh, health coverage for the diseases, for the Gambhir Bimari Okili, that disease. Is. This is the world's largest health coverage which we are getting. If we, 
if we take the population the whole of america if we take the population of europe and if we take the population of canada this all amounts to ayushman bharat of india this is this is the difference this we have to understand so and who are the people who are getting this health coverage you will be happy to note it is not on caste basis it is by profession rickshaw wala thela wala redi wala fedi wala sabji wala bus ka driver bus ka cleaner lift man barber by profession they are getting this facility and uh, we all remember aap hi logon ke paas hum aate the kehte the iska heart ka operation hona hai doctor saab kar dijiye 1.5 lakh rupaye lagega dekhiye kuch sawa lakh mein ho jaye to kaam chalega all those things used to happen we used to go to our chief ministers but now every poor man has been covered and all this is digitally all this is digitally if a laborer from jharkhand goes to tata memorial hospital in in mumbai the money is paid directly from delhi to tata cancer hospital it does not go to jharkhand it's it is directly paid so that transferable amount on uh, it is all done digitally so if i talk about the health uh, uh, the the health policy which came we undertook preventive palliative curative promotive health care all together comprehensive health care and we decided to uh, start uh, 150000 health centers to be converted into wellness centers and we decided that the age of 30 we will have their blood pressure checked the diabetes checked their dental care their mental care all those things will be done so that we we are able to detect the disease at young and we are able to address those issues at young so many health initiatives have been have taken place if i talk about medical colleges i i don't remember the exact figures but at that point of time we had only 300 medical colleges now we have got some 700 plus medical colleges which have been which are there so the percentage of students undergraduate students has also increased by 69% if i talk about uh, the all india of medical sciences we kept all the you have all yourself taken and i am very grateful to you that at one point of time we had only one all india of medical sciences later we had six and now we have 22 all india of medical sciences and all are coming up in the best possible manner mm-hmm. with the aims culture so many developments have taken place in the field of in all the fields and especially i have tried to discuss with you about the interest of uh, the about the health sector when we were there to negotiate we were always open and uh, i can proudly say that we believed in the principle of vasudhaiv kutumbakam so whenever we were there in world health assembly we always wanted to contribute and we contributed for the health of the humanity as a whole for the whole uh, world but at the same time we always took care that india's interest should be well protected and we had sometimes we had to go for a very tough negotiations your book is going to help our officers used to fight only on issues like comma or full stop <laughs> and and also also uh, the hyphen and uh, namely so namely what what are what are the uh, aspects which are undertaken then they used to go for a draft and we used to so redraft it redraft it and after five six drafts we uh, we were there to, uh, to come for a final draft so now but because of your book we are going it is going to be helpful once again i thank you and i must uh, also share with you that manisha ji has been uh, a very good administrator also uh, manisha ji has done a very some very basic work in the department she worked because i had the opportunity to work with her in in himachal she has done a wonderful work in town and country planning she has done wonderful work in ayurveda she has done wonderful work in health sector and uh, i think uh, you took a right decision at right time and you were you you came at the right place so in world health organization also your contribution is immense and uh, your pursuit and your love and your uh, interest in academics and uh, working and doing some basic work is your uh, 
uh, what I'll say is your uh, passion and uh, your uh, priority or what or passion is the right word <laughs> to do the basic work. So I once again congratulate Manisha ji and uh, may God give you strength that you continue with this work further also and contribute to the humanity. Thank you very much. List on 25th of March 2023 by Thompson Rogers India Legal. The book is available on Amazon.in and trbooksmyshopmatic.com. And also we have a good news. It's available today to buy at the registration counter specially signed by the author. And today, ladies and gentlemen, at the release of this book, we are honored to have with us the august presence of Sri J.P. Nadaji, President BJP and former Union Cabinet Minister, and Dr. Vinod K. Paul, member Niti Aayog, and Dr. Ashok Talwar. I would now request Dr. Manisha Sridhar to kindly do the honors of welcoming and felicitating Honorable Chief Guest Sri J.P. Nadaji. Once again, a very warm welcome, sir, and we are indeed grateful to you for sparing your energy time and being here with us today. Thank you. I request Dr. Manisha Sridhar to also welcome and felicitate Dr. Vinod K. Paul. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for being here with us today. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, ma'am, for doing the honor. I would request Mr. Kumarasan to kindly do the honors of welcoming Dr. Ashok Dilbar. Very warm welcome to you. Thank you, Mr. Kumarasan. Ladies and gentlemen, the eminent author, Dr. Manisha Sridhar, is Regional Advisor, World Health Organization, Southeast Asia Region. She works on intellectual property rights, IR, IPRs, regulation and trade for health and medical products. Dr. Sridhar received her master's degree in intellectual property law with specialization in patent and biotechnology law from Franklin Pierce Law Center, Concord, USA. She is a certified international mediator for IPRs dispute. She also has an MSc public health degree from London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and is one of the few professionals having a specialization in both the patent and biotechnology laws, along with public health. Dr. Sridhar, prior to joining the WHO, has been a member of the Indian Administrative Service and in that capacity has worked in different positions in Government of India and in the state government of Himachal Pradesh. She has scripted and produced a film on IPRs for World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO. She assisted the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, UNIDO, on geographical indications for traditional products. Dr. Sridhar is fluent in Hindi, English and French. And ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Manisha Sridhar, the author to kindly throw some more light on the book and the journey which is ending here today with the release of it. Over to you. Honorable Sri J.P. Nataji, President BJP and our former Union Health Minister, Dr. Vinod Paul, the member Niti Ayo, Mr. Ashok Galway, our batchmate and a very close friend, and Mr. Kumarisan from the Thomson Reuters group, who have been instrumental in the publication. And ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to welcome today Mr. J.P. Nutta, the Honorable Minister, former Minister, and also President of the BJP. And I thank you, sir, for finding time from your busy schedule to release the book this evening. It is also my privilege to welcome Dr. Paul, who has also written the foreword for the book. And thank you, Dr. Paul, for finding time to do so today. And I welcome Ashok 
and Mr. Kumarasan today. It's also my privilege to have here with me some of you who have been part of the journey and it's my deep privilege to welcome each one of you. I welcome Justice, Pilla, uh, Justice uh, Rekha Pilli, who is here today in the evening. Thank you for, for joining us. I also welcome Justice Jayant Nachi. Thank you for coming this evening and finding time. Justice Gupta Ji for finding time and joining us this evening. I also welcome the members of the Central Administrative Tribunal today who found time from their busy court schedule to be here this evening. I welcome my IIT professors, Mr. Vinishil, Dr. Vinishil Gautam, Professor Vinishil Gautam and Professor Jain, who have been instrumental in the PhD and in my process and learning many of these issues which I brought forth in the book and the rigor with which they taught us how to proceed and work in terms of research that was very critical and that was very useful when I was writing the book. Thank you for all that you did in bringing this forward for us. I welcome some of my colleagues from the Franklin Pierce Law Center here who were part of the journey and part of some of my work that we did in patent and biotechnology law for health. I welcome my WHO colleagues. Thank you for being here. My colleagues and Indian Administrative Service colleagues, thank you so much for being here this evening and being part of, of the journey. There's, there are no words to describe how I, I to, to thank you and to welcome you today for this event this evening. In many ways, I, in terms of the book, the book cover actually explains what the book is all about. If you look the, uh, at the right side of the book, you actually see the rod of Asclepius. And it is the rod of the son of Apollo. And it is the rod which is also part of the WHO logo that we have. And it is a symbol of physicians and healing. This is something that Dr. Uh, Rajiv Kuteja would welcome in terms of what he has also been looking at in terms of uh, traditional medicine. And this, uh, uh, the, the rod of Asclepius on the right, on the left which you see, this is the staff of Caduceus, which is the two serpents. Here we have one and there are two serpents over here. And this staff of Caduceus is that of Hermes, who is the, who is the Greek god of travel and of commerce. As you know, most of modern medicine has its origins in the Greek mythology. And Hermes is the fastest Greek god, travel, commerce, and incidentally, he's also the god for the alchemists, who were the forerunners of the pharmaceutical industry. And I have to thank Tom Thomson Reuters for helping me to put these two together, because that is what the book is about, that trade and commerce should support public health and healing which is on the right side and which is the rod of Asclepius. And uh, we've all heard of the Red Cross. This is, there is a white diagonal cross here for peace. And this is what I, uh, the, the book cover is all about. And it, and, and it actually summarizes a lot that, we, that I tried to bring forth in the book. And these, this, these aspects on how trade and health interface is there is extremely relevant when we look at the, that the way public health and trade interspace with each other. In fact, it was the Rockefeller Foundation which pushed for the formation of the League, in, uh, just uh, during the League of Nations for the Health Committee and also the Malaria Committee, because they were actually exploiting the mines in Latin America and they were facing a lot of problems with workers dying because of malaria. And that metamorphosed in the United Nations to form the World Health Organization. So this is some of the issues that I brought forth. And this is very relevant today also, because when we looked at the COVID-19, the interesting thing is that we were looking at vaccines and supply of vaccine and vaccine regulation. And that also emanates from the legacy that the drug regulatory authorities across the world are actually the first set of regulation they looked at 
was the Biological Products Regulation, which stems from the United States 1902 Act. So it is interesting to see that because drugs have followed vaccine regulation and all health products are following that. And all benchmarking of the WHO today, when we look at drug regulatory authorities, it is hinged on this uh, historical fact. So some of these issues become very critical when we understand. And during COVID-19, we saw uh, how uh, some of these issues become critical when we look at access to medicines. And the legal aspects become very important because, as you saw, the indemnification clauses were sometimes hindering the access to medicines. The medicines, the vaccines were ready, but they were not able to be supplied because the countries were not understanding the reasons for the indemnific indemnification clauses. And more importantly, they didn't have the, the, the capacity to be able to negotiate with uh, some of the country, uh, the, the big companies. And these are some of the issues that I think uh, are, are very critical. One of the very important points, sir, and which is very interesting, is when you look at how the mRNA vaccine was developed, and also the AstraZeneca, which was supplied by Serum Institute. And this is something I brought about in the last two chapters of the book, the chapter 8 and 9. And uh, the researchers in Oxford Institute actually formed a company, which was the Vasitech company. And uh, through Vasitech, they were able to raise uh, venture capital. And interestingly, you would think that only the health agencies were part of it, and Wellcome Trust is part of it. But you had, uh, uh, you know, Google Ventures, which was part of it. You had the Republic of Oman, which was also investing in it. And that is how that led to the formation of uh, the, uh, later on, the two Turkish immigrants took it forward in, in Pfizer, but in this case, AstraZeneca and Serum Institute provided the vaccine. So the whole complex ecosystem is very critical and relevant, also in the context of what we are trying to do today for uh, bringing traditional medicine and other health products onto the market. So I thought that this endeavor where I have tried to put all of them together, all these aspects together, uh, could be useful. So I, I, I do wish to take this opportunity to thank my parents, and particularly my father, who actually encouraged me to write. And he said, you know all this, why don't you write? And he insisted I do so. And Tarun Sridhar for having read the book from beginning to the end and insisted that I have a launch because he thought the book deserves so, and thank you, sir, for giving us the time to do that and, and, and having this, event, this uh, event today. I'm really, truly honored and very grateful to you for having done that. I'm also thankful for Thomson Reuters' entire team because they were also very keen on the launch. And more importantly, sir, they, they went into a lot of rigor into the, the publication of the book. In fact, Chapter 5, which is looking at all the patent laws, and even Chapter 6, which looks at Indian patent law and the TRIPS uh, agreements interface, Chapter 5 is particularly interesting because there are more than 600 references in that. And all the references have been checked by Thomson Reuters team, and they have been very, I, I have been uh, very grateful to them for the rigor they did. So thank you for your entire team, you and all of them sitting uh, there uh, elsewhere who have contributed to this work. I do want to take this opportunity, sir, to thank my two sons, Ashim and Rohan. They always stand by me and they have given me their very best always. And I, I thank them for all this, uh, the support that they've given me. Sachin Sridhar. And I thank each one of you uh, for coming this evening. And I welcome you from, from the bottom of my heart. I think I could not have been more blessed this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, ma'am. And ladies and gentlemen, today we are honored to have with us Dr. Vinod K. Paul, who is globally recognized medical scientist and public health exponent. The government of India appointed Dr. Paul as a member of Niti Aayog in August 2017. At Niti Aayog, he leads the health, nutrition and HRD verticals. He has played a pivotal role in the formulation of key initiatives such as Ayushman Bharat, PMJ, Ayushman Bharat Health and Wellness Center Scheme, and the Potion Abhyan. Dr. Paul, Paul is also part of the Union Government's co-team for COVID-19 pandemic response. 
is a recipient of the pre-eminent Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Centenary Award for Excellence in Biomedical Research by ICMR. He was also conferred the prestigious Esan Dogra Messi Family Health Foundation Prize by WHO at the 2018 World Health Assembly in recognition of the services in the field of family health. And may I invite you, sir, for the context setting. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome sir. Thank you. Good evening. Namaste. Honorable Sriman J.P. Nadaji, President of Bharatiya Janata Party, the world's largest party. We are not to have you, sir. Dr. Manisha Sridharji, Dr. Ashok Kalwai ji, Sri Kumar Singh ji, Honorable Justices, uh, Sri B.B.R. Subramanian ji, Sri Yoniti Ayok, Tarun Sridhar ji, Sridhar family, friends, colleagues, invitees. I am truly honored to be here to celebrate a scholarly work, a landmark work that has been compiled and put together by Dr. Manisha Sridhar. So a big hand to Manisha. And the good fortune of uh, <clears throat> going through the book and it was still being developed and the fortune of writing some good words in the foreword that she has sent to me. So the importance of this book is first and foremost it's a, not the only national but it's a global product a product for the world. It's an intellectual product which has relevance to the world. And what it does is, it makes the job of wading through the, the real maze of international instruments easy and thoughtful and evidence driven. Enabled, evidence enabled. Uh, the, we, those who are associated with the health sector would know that they are very difficult uh, instruments, paradigms, regulations that operate in the international sphere. And they have profound impact and effect, sometimes negative impact, in fact, on the way we would like to take forward public health solutions. So you make the job easy for us to find the sources, information, references, easily explained concepts in your book can be applaud you for that. Second, it is a truly seminal work. When I say that, it's structured. Her chapters are very systematic, very structured, and that actually speaks volumes about the writing style, Manisha, that you have adopted, because it going through the headings, going through the structure, easy to navigate the book. is one thing to navigate the international instrument but it's also relevant to be able to navigate a scholarly work of 500 plus pages and you make it easy by your writing style and the structuring style. Thirdly, it's very very contextual. It's contextual today in the, in the fact that we are passing through a phase when we have seen a devastating uh, event in our lives once in a century event. The pandemic is not the last one. This pandemic is not the last one. This health emergency is truly not the last one. And we will be faced with taking tough decisions. And on those decisions, there is huge bearing of the legal system, national as well as global. And therefore, making it easy for us to understand and have information in one place is truly useful for Indian scholars Indian industry, Indian policy makers, and Indian academia and researchers. So that's one context in which this is very time. We appreciate that. Secondly, you have made sure that while it is global architecture that you are trying to explain with, with stories at times, with deep quotations from the original text, but you also have maintained the India context very well. And that's very special to us because we have to be able to relate to these systems through the filter, through the lens of Indian priorities and Indian challenges. So you have done a great job in doing so. For these four reasons, I truly believe that this is a work which is uh, 
of great value today for India as well as <laughs> for the world. Let me take forward this notion of the context of India. There is no doubt that India is an important and a very important player on the world stage and its importance is rising, we know that. But in the context of health, our importance is special. A, we have the largest population on the planet and our public health system, public health resilience, public health products, public health science, public health understanding must be top class for us to take our society forward. That's one. Secondly, we are also the pharmacy of the world. We are the vaccine hub of the world. 65% plus vaccines cured by WHO for the world emanate from India. One out of five pills ingested by Americans are made in India. And we have huge stakes in this. Diagnostics. In the wake of COVID, India from zero produced 278 diagnostic tests, RT-PCR, the antibody, etc., MLT, etc. If 78% of them are made in India. And in a, matter of, in a matter of no time, in three to four months, we actually had 100 of them only. The speed matter. And next time the speed is going to matter even more. Because now the benchmark is not nine months plus for a vaccine development, as happened this time worldwide, including India. We launched our vaccine within within 15 days of the first vaccine being launched on any, in any part of the world. Roughly 20th of December and 2nd January. Uh, that was the time period. Next time around, the global community has, the world has to be ready. But we have to remember that nobody is going to get the vaccines for us. We have seen it this time around. We will have to develop our own solutions, these countermeasures, vaccines, drugs, diagnostics for ourselves. Sir, you are well aware that India has inoculated 2.2 billion plus doses. There is one thing to say that we have vaccines that are 2 to 3 dollars cost to the government, to the citizens indirectly. The vaccines available in the other world were 15, 20, 35 dollars per dose. If we had to procure 2 billion plus doses, it would have meant spending more than 1.2% of GDP on procuring those vaccines. Not that we don't have money, India has that much of resource. But the fact is, where are the 2 billion doses in the world during 21-22? Total production was 3 billion doses and everybody kept it for themselves. What we, were be, what we were being offered, sir, through a difficult regime, to which I'll touch upon very briefly, was a total of about 19 protoses. Not even enough for, you know, reasonable geography in India. We have to therefore produce these countermeasures ourselves. And in this game, tomorrow's solutions also have digital solutions, AI-driven solutions, which will leapfrog and will have capabilities of some nations more than the others and we cannot be left behind and therefore it is very important that we understand the ecosystem of, of IPR, the patent laws and international law, the restrictions or facilitatory aspects of the international law and we master them as we move in this direction. Ultimately the WHO EUA available or not available is talked about. Is our vaccine there for other people to use? <coughs> so we have to master this and therefore I believe this is very timely. So specifically, this book helps us understand TRIPS, the GAT, the TBTs and all the jargon that it has. But on a more serious note, it deals with stuff issues like indemnification and no fault compensation in the context of again vaccine. Indemnification is relevant because once we were getting those minuscule doses, we are being offered by companies with those minuscule doses, we were told to indemnify the companies. India has never done that. And we had to negotiate this and we had to understand what the law about indemnification was and there is a story behind that. 
We were also being told not only to do that, but also to waive sovereign immunity for the conference. He has never done that. It would mean that in the context of failed arbitration with the companies, they can take away our aeroplanes from foreign soil or the typewriter from the US Embassy for that matter. These are sovereign assets. The point I'm making is we need for us to be ready to stand with confidence, to master all this in order to be able to offer solutions through Atmanir Bharata for our nation any time that it is required. Pandemics or no pandemics, we need many of these things today and therefore it is truly, truly timely. I appreciate the effort that uh, Manisha you have made, highly relevant, very timely book. All in all, I suggest that this scholarly book be part of your library. It is not something that you can, you know, it's a, it's a volume, a large book in some sense. But it is surely a book which is essential in the library of the stakeholders that are concerned with this. And it is surely a book that must be read by the students and the scholars in the space of innovation and public health. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, sir. And ladies and gentlemen, may I now request the Honorable Chief Guest, Sri J.P. Nadaji, to kindly do the honors of releasing the book. I would request Dr. Manisha Sridhar to kindly present the book to Sri J.P. Nadaji. this opportunity to thank our author first, Dr. Manisha Sridhar, for getting this book published by Thomson Writers and making it available to the readers and the wider audience at large. I don't think I am qualified to talk about the book and I think the experts on the dais have spoken about it and the people of the dais know much about it and I guess and I think this will be a very good book very useful for various people in the public health and other departments. And just to say one more line before I proceed with my word of thanks, the book titled Public Health Innovations Through a Maze of International Instrument, which is an excellent book that tries to bring the different perspectives of public health to its readers, is one of its kind of book which is published by Thomson Writers, which usually specializes only sticking to the core side of law, which is the uh, legislation and the taxation. So this is uh, one other diversion to what we try to do in India and we also promote a lot of Indian authors. That's just a note which I wanted to add to this. And my special thanks to Sri J.P. Nattaji, President BJP and former Union Cabinet Minister for releasing the book in the distinguished presence of Dr. Vinod Paul and Mr. Ashok Dalvai in this evening. My heartfelt thanks to Dr. Gautam, Dr. Jain, Sri BVR Subramaniam, CEO Niti Ayok, Justice Rekha Palli, members of the CAT, all senior officials, <coughs> prominent person of the dais, each and every one who has come and grace this occasion on the release of this book. I'd also like to thank Mr. Ashok Dalvai, Chairman PM Commission on Doubling Farmers Income for gracing this occasion by his presence. And most importantly, as a publisher, for me, it is great to see such a large audience in one of the book launches. And it gives me 
and the authors like Dr. Manisha Sridhar and the more likes as I would assume some of you would be interested to keep us doing more such work with greater confidence. Having said that, I'd like to thank the audience for their presence this evening and making this event a memorable one. I thank the author and other dignitaries for giving me this opportunity to express my gratitude on this final occasion, on this special occasion. Finally, I'd also like to thank the organizers and various other members who have taken keen interest and who have been equally involved in making this evening a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And may I invite you, sir, to kindly grace the stage. And ladies and gentlemen, I have the proud privilege in inviting Sri J.P. Nandaji. To kindly grace the stage with his esteemed presence, I would also invite to grace the stage Dr. Vinod K. Paul, Member of Niti Ayok, Dr. Ashok Dalvai, IAS, CEO of National Rainfield Area Authority and Chairman PM Task Force on Doubling Farmers Income, Dr. Manisha Sridhar, the author, and Mr. C. Kumarasan, Sales Head Thomas Rotters, India Legal. Namaskar and good evening, Honorable Chief Guest, Sri J.P. Nataji, President BJP and former Union Cabinet Minister, Guest of Honor, Dr. Vinod K. Paul, Member of Niti Ayog, Eminent Dignitaries on the Days, Special Invitees, Respected Members of the Press and Media, Ladies and Gentlemen, on behalf of the Thompson Daughters India Legal,